Hi everyone, I'm Ralph and I like music and blinking lights. In my best haul ever video, I told you the story of how I got to own a nearly pristine Roland Alpha Tuner 2 and that I was going to build a programmer for it, because there are no hands-on controls to create your own patches. So the other day I received this small packet from JLCPCB and in it I got these. Prototype boards for my very own programmer. I say prototype with deliberation, because I expect there to be a few improvements. Not the least because I forgot a few things and messed up some, royally I might add. For example, I forgot to add a MIDI through connector or decoupling capacitors on the ICs. It does have a space for a display and a rotary encoder for settings and stuff, which, well, let's not skip ahead. The electronics proper are fairly simple. If you take a look at the service manual of Roland's PG300 programmer, you can see that it's basically a microcontroller that, through its analog pins, reads the values of linear potentiometers, which you adjust the parameter values with. Because it has only 8 pins, but a voice on the Juno has 36 different parameters, 32 of those are multiplexed onto 4 analog pins by means of 4 74HC 4051 8-way analog multiplexers, while the remaining 4 are wired directly to the controller. I designed mine more or less exactly the same but with an Arduino Nano as the brains of the controller. The PG300 and some of the clones I found use potentiometers for all parameters. There are a few, however, which have discrete values. For example, the oscillator range, the various oscillator waveforms and the envelope shape. As a matter of taste, I just don't like the idea of using a continuous controller i.e. a potentiometer, for discrete values. Therefore I've provided switches for those. Now I don't have enough digital pins for all those switches and didn't want to use a shift register, but I do have spare analog pins on the Arduino and the multiplexers. So I wired the switches to act as kind of discrete, i.e. non-continuous potentiometers. I ordered small rotary switches on AliExpress that fit here and four position linear ones, but they haven't arrived yet. I could substitute them temporarily with real potentiometers though. First, I'm going to stuff it with a few components to check the circuit before wasting any components and or time unnecessarily. If it's alright, I can then send a second prototype off for manufacturing and in the meantime continue with more of my unfinished business. So let's do that now. First error. I just noticed that I accidentally wired two controllers onto the same pin. This probably happened when, in the schematics, I switched from using potentiometers for the discrete values to switches. I had a mismatch between the net names in different parts of the schematics. Oh well, I'll have to cut the trace on the board and then connect the other switch to the free pin on multiplexer 4. I'll do that when the switches arrive. Ok, I stuffed two potentiometers and two multiplexers on the board. And I'm now going to test if I can read the values on the Arduino. Alright, so uh, it appears that you should avoid reading unconnected pins using analog read. 
because it completely messes with your testing of the connected pins. I modified the software to only consult those potentiometers that are actually mounted. After having tested the first potentiometers and have found that they can be read, I stuffed the remaining ones that go to the same multiplexers. Second and third error. I didn't connect the chorus and manual switches to the corresponding pins on the Arduino. Again, because of a mismatch in the net names. I used a short piece of wire to connect the switch to the Arduino. Later I'll do the same with the manual switch. Ok, all the components that I have are mounted to the board. What's missing are the switches. I did stuff the voltage dividers for the switches to act as discrete potentiometers. I intended not to mount the display and the encoder. Or at least to postpone it until the order would eventually be delivered. But it just so happened that I already had a correct display in my inventory. So of course I had to mount both of them, in case of the display, using a socket. In the meantime I also fixed the missing connection on the manual button. There's a socket for a parallel load shift register for the encoder pins, but I'm not going to mount it right now. So, this is the prototype board completed, at least as far as possible. Actually, I might mount the shift register after all. Ok, the hardware is done. Everything else is software. The controllers work. The values are mapped to the correct data ranges and correct system exclusive messages are sent. even when the manual button is pressed. Even the encoder works now. I completely messed up the shift register, the encoder and the display. It was a last minute edition and I didn't check it before sending it off for manufacturing. Because why would you? Checking is for losers. Error 4 and 5. I didn't connect the display's CS pin. Again because of a mismatch in the net names. Chip enable versus chip select. And I forgot to wire the reset pin which the display apparently insists on having. Error 6. I didn't include pull-up resistors for the encoder pins and had to wire them to a not so nearby 5 volts point. That's the red wire going to the resistors. Finally, and error 7, was that I permanently grounded the latch pin of the shift register because why wouldn't you? Latching is for losers. Of course, the register doesn't shift unless the latch pin is high, so I had to reseat the chip with its pin 1 sticking out and then wire it to the DC pin of the display. Uh, the latter one is not used when the Arduino does not talk to the display and I kind of command it to shift a bit so design-wise that's fine. 
I fixed all errors in the schematics as I encountered them, so I can have a programmer that works and perhaps looks good as well. Um, I still have four of these crappy boards. Fortunately, I made only five of them. Actually, for a moment, I considered offering them for free plus shipping to anybody who wants to build one. But to be honest, it's so crappy that even I find it impertinent to ask any money for it. Now, of course, I can't afford uh, mailing them across the globe on my dime. So, unless you live within Swiss B post range. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching me fail spectacularly with my second PCB design. Perhaps I should stick to kits and or software. And if you did, please leave a thumbs down and tell your friends. And don't forget to subscribe for more music and blinking lights. Tschüss zusammen.